I have met a lot of Syrians who have told me that even if the war is about to be ended, that they want to leave because they have no water. They don't have the basic necessities for life. Syria was one of those states in the Arab world whose standard of living had become comparable to that of Western European countries. It was completely self-supporting in terms of uh, food supply and the conditions prevailing in the field of health were fine. For instance, kids, 95% of kids were all getting vaccination. Nowadays, the situation has considerably worsened. The unemployment rate, which was uh, about 8%, is now over 50%. The rate of growth, which was about 4.5% per year per capita, has uh, now become a rate of uh, impoverishment. Workers like me earn three or 4,000 Syrian pounds per day. With that money, you can't even buy a kilo of bananas. If you have kids, your life will be even more difficult. Following the, the, the cessation of the hostilities, the United States has imposed very harsh sanctions on the Syrian people, targeting the weakest strata of the social society in Syria, of the Syrian society. So the poorest people in Syria, the weakest, are targeted now by the most powerful and rich country in the world, the United States of America. This talks to you a lot about the human values and the democracy of the United States. As people around the world struggle to fight COVID-19, countries like Iran and harsh U.S. sanctions face a particularly dire situation. The direct effect of sanctions is that accessing foreign medicine is very difficult. Prices are much higher because of foreign currency shortages caused by sanctions. Foreign pharmaceutical companies do not sell us medicine because they're afraid of punitive U.S. sanctions. Several academic studies have concluded that sanctions almost never work. In fact, they very often fail spectacularly to achieve their tactical objectives, producing instead the opposite. This doesn't mean that they aren't painful, that they don't hurt people, especially the most poor and vulnerable in societies over which they are imposed. We've seen this in Iran, for example, and other places, not only during COVID-19, but also following natural disasters.